moments we stand before you today. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy and forgiveness. For indeed, how great is our God. You hear our praise and you hear our prayers and you hear our thoughts, Lord. So these next few moments, God, we want to hear from you. Speak to us from your word. Challenge us. May our ears be open and our hearts receptive. Thank you, God, that you bring the miracle, that your timing is perfect and your way is just. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. Morning. Welcome. Lovely to have you here. Great opportunity to share with you. Saturday is going to be an exciting day as this church is transformed into a market stall as we raise money to bring uh, ladies from the Marshall Islands who apparently sing quite nicely, I have it on good account. Um, so Val, uh, Val's involved in that and a great project and, and great commitment to that. So we want you all here. But Friday, what time do we need to be here, Val, to help you set up and transform this wonderful church into an amazing market stall? What time? Oh, you can get in at any time of the day. What time would you like us here, though? I think 10 is the time. 10 a.m.? Beautiful. Be here 10 a.m. Friday morning. Help set up the market stall on Saturday. There's a few flyers floating around. Invite your neighbour, cousin, and great auntie. That would be good. Uh, so do that. 10 a.m. Uh, Friday morning will be here for set up. So come and join me and Val. Did anybody um, put flyers out in this general uh, there's a couple of hands. If someone would like a letterbox our street, that would be lovely. Uh, Ron will do it Monday after Bible study, won't you, Ron? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. Yes. I can put a few around, that's fine. So there's a few flyers floating around. Do that as well. Just wanted to remind you of that. So Friday, come and help. That would be lovely. And do that. But as many hands make like work. Light work. Well, this morning we're going to look at faith and wisdom, God's timing, my timing, your timing, our frustration at times, because our schedule at times is different to God's schedule, right then? Yes, that's right. So today, don't worry about having the right words to say. Show love, give grace, bring hope. That's how I started, uh, finished last Sunday. Show love, give grace, bring hope. That's how I finished off last week and that's how I wanted to start this week. Let us be people who bring grace and hope and love into every situation. Matthew 17 verse 20, he replied, Because you have so little faith, truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will be moved. Nothing will be impossible for you. Have you been deceived about your destiny? You thought God was going to show up like Superman and fix it all straight away, but he showed up like a mustard seed. Small and insignificant at first. The tree doesn't look like the seed. But it's still a mustard seed that will eventually grow into a great tree. From small beginnings. It may not look obvious what God is doing in your life right now. Because it may not look like much is happening, happening currently. But that doesn't mean there is no opportunity to see growth and development. When God opens a door, no one can shut it. When He acts, no one can stop Him. No season or person or circumstances or limitations can stop the will and work and power of God in our lives. It's interesting to note in the story of David, who made one of the biggest failures, sleeping with Bathsheba. How God transformed his life. In 2 Samuel chapter 11, it's verses 2 and 3. One evening David got up from his bed and walked around on the roof of the palace. 
from the roof, he saw a woman bathing. The woman was very beautiful. And David sent someone to find out about her. The man said, She is Bathsheba, the daughter of Elam, and the wife of Uriah the Hittite. You know the story of David. He made sure that Uriah was killed in battle so that he could take Bathsheba as his wife. Now, if you know a bit more of the story, the first child that they had died. And the next child they had was named Solomon, who was the wisest man who ever lived at that time. David's son of wisdom was born out of his greatest mistake. 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 24. Then David comforted his wife, Bathsheba, for their son had died. And he went to her and made love to her. She gave birth to a son, and they named him Solomon. The Lord loved him. Friends, it's not always obvious that you are becoming wiser. Wisdom often feels like dumb decisions at times. We have to gain wisdom at the expense of the day. I've discovered that reward dresses as responsibility. God is not going to put the reward right in front of you. He's going to wrap it up in responsibility. David had no clue that Goliath was waiting for him, that he would encounter this giant. He just knew he had to take bread to his brothers and give them something to eat. It was his responsibility that unlocked his reward. If he'd waited for this guy Goliath to show up, he never would have had an opportunity to see him or see what God could do through him. But it was in his simple assignment that God revealed a greater plan. David was just being obedient with the little information he had. Hey, take some food to your brothers. It's found in 1 Samuel 17, verse 17. Now Jesse, who's David's dad, said to his son, David, take this ephod of roast grain and these ten loaves of bread to your brothers and hurry to their camp. And the rest is history. And the giant was defeated. One of the great stories in the life of Jesus is that of his friend Lazarus. There's some disappointment, there's some tears. There is a miraculous miracle in John chapter 11. But it's interesting to read this about Jesus' actions. Because when he heard that his friend Lazarus was sick, sick, was breaking them in for a friend, when he heard that his friend Lazarus was sick, he stayed a little longer where he was. It's John chapter 11. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. Of course you would. And then he said to his disciples, let's go back to Judea. Lord Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. She wanted a hospital visitation, not a resurrection. Amen. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Jesus is about to show all those people in Bethany that resurrection is not about an event, but a person. I am the resurrection. But if Jesus showed up and healed Lazarus when they wanted him to, he would have not had the opportunity to reveal who he was. That they had not perceived yet or understood yet about Jesus. In his waiting, friends, that seems harsh to to Mary and Martha, he's actually staging a greater miracle. 
So when Jesus arrives, his friend has died. Because this death is about to turn into life. Sometimes God lets something die in your life because resurrection is, is what he's all about and who he is. Let's roll the stone away. The voice of the Lord unwraps death. Remove those graves closed for Lazarus is coming out. God's job is outcome. Your God, job is process. The longer that you can think you can control outcomes in your life, the more frustrated you're going to be. Let God control the outcome as we enjoy this journey of faith. Many of us were taught starting out that faith was the way of, control, of controlling outcomes. It was like if you prayed this and did that and said that, then you can expect this. But everyone in here has a Lazarus. Everyone has a Lazarus factor. That is the thing in your life that made the formula fall apart. The Lazarus factor is the thing that you called the, the Lazarus factor is the thing that called you to question the very nature of faith. John chapter 11 verse 32. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. We see in this passage that faith is rarely a form of manipulation by which we get God to keep our schedule. I've got news for you. God will not be manipulated. God will not be moved just because we feel a bit uncomfortable in a certain situation. And I'm sorry to point it out, but faith is not a means of manipulation. It's patience with mystery. It's patience with mystery. The kind of mystery that we can say on one hand, God can do anything. But in that same breath, as we say God can do anything, there is something in your life right now that God has not done. And you've seen it in His Word. And you've seen it in people's lives. And you're wondering, when's my turn, God? I'm on track. I'm on schedule. I prayed. I believed. I gave. But he has not done it yet for you. We all have a Lazarus. We thought it would happen sooner. But we needed to have patience and faith. Jesus was on his way. It's going to be a greater outcome than we could have ever imagined. Don't listen to the doubters and the negative voices, the whispers that say, God isn't enough and he can't do that and he hasn't heard your prayer and he doesn't love you because he does. He's on his way. We confuse God's love with proof. It's about how we deal with his perceived absence. The love of God is proven in my life when I'm not seeing what he's up to. It's having patience in that mystery and in that waiting and in that gap and in that space. Have patience. But by faith I thank God that he is Lord of every situation and every drama and every concern. And he's calling me to wait and trust him. But his timeline might be different than ours. But we give him praise anyway, but he's not far off. In John 11, 43, 44, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. 
Jesus said to them, Take the grave clothes off and let him go. Lazarus, come out. Unwrap him. Let him go. Time to unwrap that miracle. Time to unwrap that thing that you thought was dead. That job, that relationship, that situation. For God is speaking life and hope into it today. A great thing happened that day. A dead man came to life. A bit more significant than just making a sick man well. For Jesus knows the best outcome. Anybody pleased about that? We need a bit of a resurrection in here this morning. <laughs> Trust him in the waiting. For he is the resurrection and the life. The giver of grace, salvation and forgiveness. I saw this during the week from Craig Michelle. <clears throat> And I'll leave you with this thought. Forgiveness doesn't change what happened in the past. But it can change what happens in the future. Forgiveness doesn't change what happened in the past. But it can change what happens in the future. May God bless you. This morning I'll invite Jamie to come and share.